inside your heart I want to live here inside your love I want to live here inside your joy And there's nothing that I want more I want to live here inside your heart I want to live here inside your love I want to live here inside your joy And there's nothing that I want more I want to live here inside your heart I want to live here inside your love I wanna live here inside your heart. I wanna live here inside your love. I wanna live here inside your joy. And there's nothing that I want more. I wanna live here inside your heart. I wanna live here inside your love. I wanna live here inside your joy. And there's nothing that I want more. I wanna live here inside your heart. I wanna live here inside your love. I wanna live here inside your joy And there's nothing that I want more I wanna live here inside your heart I wanna live here inside your love I wanna live here inside your joy And there's nothing that I want more I wanna live here inside your heart I wanna live here inside your love I wanna live here inside your joy And there's nothing that I want more Cause when you move I can't recover when I rediscover I see new colors in all my heart Long to uncover more Yeah, come on More oh. Sing it again And when you move, I can recover I get wrecked when I rediscover more Jesus More oh. And when you speak, I see new colors in all my heart Long to uncover more Jesus More oh.
permission for you. Just tell him right now. Just give him permission to search your heart and do what he wants to do. that we've lost a lot of our instrumentation up here because I feel like it's the gut cry of the people that's going to move the heart of the Father to move in our city. Could you, listen, we don't need all the trappings and the lights. We just need a people desperate to see God move in a city. And I know that we've got the fullness of heaven on the inside, but I'm crying out for a people that don't know who they are to catch a glimpse of identity and let that, let the shout come forward that cries out that somebody else that doesn't know him would begin to shout as well. Could you shout for your city this morning? Could you shout for your neighbor this morning? Come on. Shout! We want more! Give us 
some more. God, oh, we want more. God, oh, we want more. Oh, we want more. Yeah, we want more. Hey. Give us more, God, to overflow. To overflow. To overflow. your love we want to live here inside your joy and there's nothing that we want more we want to live here inside your heart we want to live here inside your love we want to live here inside your joy and there's nothing that we want more we want to live here inside your heart we want to live here inside your love we want to live here inside your joy and there's nothing that we want more we want to live here inside your heart we want to live here inside your love we want to live here inside your joy and there's nothing that we want more we want to live here inside your heart we want to live here inside your love we want to live here inside your joy and there's nothing that we want more Come on, come on, don't miss the invitation right now. Come on, listen, there is an invitation right now that is met with a declaration. What's amazing right now is we're in a season that we're beginning a new year on the Hebraic calendar. And the whole thing, the whole picture of iron, the whole picture of vision is that you have a choice to see through light or to see through darkness. The whole picture is it's an invitation and a separation. The first time it was ever mentioned throughout scripture was in Genesis chapter one, verse four, when God released light and said it was good. And there was a separation between darkness and light and it became the first day. Kingsway, I wanna tell you, listen, we're not waiting for a new day, you are the new day. You are the new day. And I'm telling you, there is a cry coming out of this house that will awaken the dawn, but it is not for us to sit back and let somebody else lead it. Each and every one of you are called as a leader in this now move of God. And I wanna encourage you right now. Come on, get out of where you are and come down to the front. Let's begin to press in. Come on, let's give his vision, our voice. He's lighting this up with truth. your joy and there's nothing that I want more I want to live here inside your heart I want to live here inside your love I want to live here inside your joy and there's nothing that I want more I want to live here inside your heart I want to live here inside your love 
on, just give him thanks this morning. Yeah, Father, we praise you. Yeah, we give you the glory and honor and praise forever, Jesus. We give you glory, glory, glory.
song in our heart With a verse on our heart Singing out to the one that we love We will awake in the dawn With a song in our heart With a verse on our tongue Singing to the one that we love Dawn makers, daybreakers, 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 dawn makers. Feel with the glory of God. We feel with the glory of God. We will awake in the door.
It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Say it again. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you. When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. We oh, search much. Search much deeper within, and through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back, and I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry. of being able to come together and lift up the praises of God. To be able to come together and to be able to not just come together in His presence and around His presence, but as carriers of the presence of God. And I want to tell you, you know, if you weren't here earlier and what, when what happened happened, I don't know how you can see it later, but <laughs> that wasn't planned. <laughs> We started having breakers popping and you know all that kind of stuff and power started going out and losing instruments and losing all the lights on this side and then all the overhead lights and then all of a sudden we just we just drew our attention to guys we have a choice to agree with darkness or agree with light 
And if we'll agree with light and begin to move forward in that agreement, that God will begin to give his vision for our life, our voice. And as soon as everyone begin to start pressing in, guess what? All the lights turn back on. I believe that is a word to you. I believe that is a word for us. And I believe that's a confirmation that when we choose to agree in our hearts with that which is good, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 22, if the eye is single or if the eye is good, the whole body be full of light. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of God that brings transformation to the world around us, amen? It's not being reminded of what we're not. It's being, it's being reminded of who he is and who we are because of what he did, amen? It's all about Jesus. He is the light of this world. And I'm telling you, when he comes to live in your heart, he brings his light with him. And when I look out across this room right now, I see a room filled with shining lights. They could turn all of these off and this room would still be bright as a new yeah, day. That's it. That's it. Bright as a new day because of Christ and you, the hope of glory. Amen? Why don't you just take a moment right now and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Let them know how, how happy you are that they're here. Bless one another's light. Bless their life and make room for his love. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And as we have folks greeting one another here, we wanna welcome those of you who are joining us this morning. Whether you're watching live or you're joining us later as a video replay, we know that we have people joining with us from all across, all across the world. And we thank you this morning for taking your time to be with us. We love you, God bless you. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your awakened ones, awakened hearts, awakened minds. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I love the sound of here in our Kingsway family. Just love on, uh, love on one another. Man, what an awesome, awesome morning already in the presence of the Lord. And and with each other. Man, we're honored to have everyone here this, uh, this awesome Sunday morning. We've got some, uh, some ushers who have Connect cards in their hands right now. And then if, if this is your first time to join us here at Kingsway for a Kingsway service, man, we just, I started to say we love you. And of course we, uh, we do. We love you guys. We're so thankful that you're here. We love that you're here with us today. If you could hold your hand up nice and high all over the sanctuary, our ushers are going to put connect cards in your hands. We've got hands going up right here in the, uh, in the middle over here in this section. Make sure that hand stays up until you get a connect card. We love calling you guys first time family members. So if all of our regular our family members. Come on, let's put our hands together and just honor our first-time family members. Jackson, Todd, we've got some down here with Miss uh, Joseph and Laura Deering. It was awesome to meet you guys before service. Man, you guys were just glowing with the love and light of Jesus when you walked in, and I, I think it's just increased since you've been here, so it's great to see you guys. If you would take just a few moments, make sure you fill out that Connect card. We want to send you all an email so you can get a link to some Kingsway podcasts and some Kingsway worship, but also if you have any any prayer requests, we'd love to be partnering with you and your family. A member of our team will give you guys a call this week and just hear how the Lord brought you here and pray with and for you guys. And if you would make sure and put that completed Connect card down here in the offering basket at the, uh, the end of today's service, that would absolutely be amazing. And so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a special announcement about, uh, about our King's Kids, and then I'll bring our King's Kids up. Man, we've been talking about expansion. We've been talking about more classes for our kids, and that time is here say it's here starting that was pretty good this side this side kind of got this guy say it's here that's uh, that's really good now I feel like I'm about to bust out in either a youth service or a kid service and do a little competition but we won't uh, we won't go there starting this Wednesday night at 6:30 and you'll hear more about that our Wednesday nights launching and then our next Sunday morning service will begin our official changeover for our kids we've added a class and man, thanks to, uh, to Pastor Ben, who just, man, did an awesome job making a detailed graphic. How many of you guys appreciate Pastor Ben and his handiwork, whether it's up here or behind the scenes, just does an amazing job. 
Parents, when you go to pick up your kids today, the teachers will have these full color cards they're going to put in your hands. We're adding a class. If you'll see bed, that's going to be our new babies and crawlers. I think we've got at least half a dozen mamas who are, uh, who are pregnant right now. We've got several new babies, so that room is just getting ready to explode. And then right across from that, the walkers to two-year-olds, and then our threes and fours will be together, and then our five and six-year-olds will be together. And then what we'll do when we call up King's Kids starting Wednesday night and next Sunday, it's going to be our seven-year-olds through fifth graders. Seven-year-olds through fifth graders, man, it's just going to be, be an awesome time. Parents, I'll be available. Our leaders will be available if you guys have any questions about that. Some say, hey, can I keep my kids in for, for worship like I've been doing? Absolutely. Several of you love to keep your kids in for worship until they whisper in your ear or until they're ready to go and be with their friends. Feel totally free to, uh, to, to do that. But man, we're just uh, we're excited about all that the Lord is doing in the expansion, extension, and increase in our King's Kids ministry. So now for today, if we could have our first graders through fifth graders, come on down and let's go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap for these... Uh, these awesome awakened ones. Man, I couldn't get that phrase out of my spirit as we were worshiping. Man, I was thinking about their hearts as they just continue to come and Miss Deb and her team having just a, an incredible message that the Lord has really put in her heart and their hearts to impart. And so let's stretch forth our hands right now to these awakened ones. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for the beauty, Lord, that you display and the glory that you display through your sons and daughters, Lord. As their hearts are crying out for more of you, their minds are saying, yes, Lord, feed us your word. Their hands and their feet are ready to lay hands on and ready to prophesy, God, and just ready to see the demonstration of your spirit through them, Lord. So we just partner with what you're doing in their lives. We bless them, God. We bless you. We bless their teachers. And we can't wait to hear when they came running out of King's Kids telling all that you did today in Jesus name. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord. We've got a crew back there ready to uh, ready to greet them and ready to uh, to meet them. Now, if you'll turn your attention to the screen behind me for this morning's video announcements, please. Hey everyone, my name's Ben and I am so excited to welcome you to Kingsway Church this morning. We have some incredible news and that's that our Wednesday night services are back starting this Wednesday with a brand new start time at 6.30 p.m. Pastor Jason will be starting a brand new teaching series called Learning to Lead where we'll discuss leadership at every level. You do not wanna miss this. We also have a brand new giving platform that we are so excited about, making giving easier than ever. So pull out your phone, check out this quick video, and please enjoy the rest of the service. You see, giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE. Amen, amen. How many of you excited about that new platform? Come on. It really is a lot of fun. How many of you have already given that way? Yeah? If not, it is super easy and convenient. And if you're like me, you know, it seems like whenever we're, we're doing, doing the offering, whether here or someplace else, you know, it's always, it's always so distracting to try to have to stop and pull out your credit card and write down your number or, you know, even in writing that check. And it's just a super easy way to text one word, one amount, and it's done. So easy. How many of you like easy? Come on. I love easy. But uh, let's pray. And um, I'm excited for what the Lord has for you today. How many of you are excited? How many of you are thankful? Yeah? You know, this is the day the Lord has made. And I'm telling you, listen, if we'll make the choice to rejoice, not only can we be glad, I promise you, you will. Amen? 
So let's just take a moment as we begin to pray and just begin to whatever rejoicing looks like to you, whatever it looks like for you to give thanks to him from your heart. I just encourage you right now, there is freedom in the room to enter into his gates, to begin to come into his courts, to begin to delight ourselves in the presence of God where the fullness of joy rests. Amen? So Father, right now, Lord, all across the room and Lord, those watching right now online, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, God. God, we thank you for the things that maybe we forgot about. Lord, the goodness of God that we take for granted, God. God, I thank you that I'm saved. God, I remember what it was like to not be saved. And so, God, I never want, I never want to just grow accustomed to being a Christian, God. I want to always realize that, that, that all of the groanings of creation are looking for me to manifest sonship. But it wasn't too long ago that I was lost myself. And so, God, that I would not lose sight of the souls that you have in your sights. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks for our salvation. God, we give you thanks right now for the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many of you are thankful for the Holy Ghost? Amen. God, we thank you that you didn't leave us orphans, but you gave us one just like you, Jesus, that would make us just like you. God, I thank you that when Holy Spirit comes into the room, when he begins to speak to our ears and begin to awaken our hearts, Lord, that he lifts up Jesus. He manifests God in our midst by taking what the Father has so generously given to his Son and giving it to us in Jesus' name. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you, Lord, for those relationships, Lord, that sometimes maybe we resent in a moment, God. Right now, we just want to stop and give you thanks. Have you ever just stopped and given God thanks for the things money can't buy? I'm telling you, listen, all of a sudden, the things that money can buy won't look, that, they won't look as impressive as they did before Thanksgiving, amen? Why don't you just take a moment right now and start thanking the Lord for your spouse? Why don't you start take, thanking the Lord for the kid that you couldn't get dressed on time today, Amen. Come on, what about that dog that, that, that got kicked instead of got fed this morning? Come on, just begin to start thanking God for those intangibles, those, those things that honestly, without them, you would not be who you are. You could take away your car, you could take away your house, you could take away the clothes on your back, but I'm telling you, you would still be the same person unless you lost that person to your left, to your right, or those kids that we just released. Come on, right now, I'm telling you, Thanksgiving will change how you see what you see. Just let it begin to bubble up. Just come on, let it from your heart to his. I just want to get out of the way. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. C.S. Lewis said the perfect, the perfect religious or Christian service, the perfect church service would be the service we didn't know we were in. Don't listen. Don't change because you came in. Come on, just it's you and him in the room. Come back to that heart of worship right now. Come on, lay aside everything else. Lay aside what they think, she says, and just you and Jesus right now. Let your voice be heard right now. Come on, thanks is not thanksgiving until it's given. Come on, just begin to give gratitude a voice right now. Come on, as we begin to finish up one year and begin to step into a new year, let's begin to thank God for what he's done. Let's begin to thank God for where he's brought us from because I'm telling you, we can begin to praise him for what he's about to bring us into, but not until we begin to give thanks for where he brought us from. Thank you, Jesus. The will of God is always attracted to a thankful heart. The will of God will always find a heart of thanksgiving. You can't keep a thankful man down. They're buoyant. <laughs> you can throw them in the depth. You can throw a rock on top of them, but hope will make them float every time. Come on, what's in you is greater than what's on you. What's in you is greater than what's around you. Come on, begin to give it a voice right now. Come on, right now, all across the room, right now.
Come on, begin to, come on, like he's worth it. Come on, like he's worth it right now. We say all praise, we say all honor, we say all glory, but when it comes to the opportunity, will we give it? Come on, are we willing to be inconvenienced? Are we willing to get out of the comfy chair just to raise our hands like David and say, God, I'm gonna lift my hands, I'm gonna bless your name because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips will praise you. I don't know about you, but I've looked to see his power and his glory. I've looked for his presence. I've looked for his purpose. I've looked for his promise. I didn't wake up this morning looking to come somewhere. I looked up, I woke up this morning looking to be someone and it's the reflection of Christ. It's the revealing of my father. And that is what each and every one of us are called to this morning. And thanksgiving will keep you plugged into the place of power. Thanksgiving will cause you to be lit in a dark world. Thanksgiving will cause you to get your eyes off of you and onto him. Ha, 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 ha. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I believe, you know, I, I, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I don't believe we've seen anything yet. I don't believe we've seen anything yet. But I also believe you're not gonna see any more until you're thankful for what you've seen. Come on now. Come on. Come on, just the fact that some of y'all are still married should have you be doing cartwheels in the aisles. Come on, just the fact that some of y'all are still alive should have you doing backflips in the balcony. I'm telling you right now, I know where I was without him and I know where I am because of him right now. Come on, why don't you throw off the, the, the heavy garments of religion and allow your heart to be awakened to relationship. Come on, lay aside every weight. Lay aside the sin of fear. Lord, that man-pleasing spirit, that keeping up with the Joneses. Guess what? I know the Joneses. They don't have anything to keep up with. Quit trying to keep up with people around you and start living to him. Start looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher. Come on, we're surrounded. We're not here by ourselves. This is not just the people sitting in the room. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses cheering us on because they can see where we are. They know where we've been, but they can also see where we're about to be. Don't allow complacency to hold you down. Don't become apathetic. Don't become comfortable in your Christianity. There is a lost world that is waiting to be found and you have been given their keys. The keys that God has given to you can open doors that no man can shut, shut doors that no man can open. And I'm telling you right now, there are people that are living captive to, to, to consequences of choices that they've made or have been made for them. And I don't know about you, but I believe that we have been anointed with the spirit of God to preach the gospel to them, to bring healing to them, the recovery of sight to them, the liberating of those who've been held captive and the opening of prison doors to stand up like Isaiah said and declare that this is the year of God's favor. This is the year of God's favor. This is the year that all of a sudden, Everything you've longed for, everything you've dreamed for is just birthed in your lap. It just comes out. It just comes out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. God, I thank you that you don't call me to preach sophisticated sermons, God. God, I thank you you're just looking for messengers. You're looking for voices who prepare the way. You're looking for people who don't care what man say. But just say, God, whatever you want to do, I'll give my life to it. God, I'll lay down my life no matter what the cost. They can say what they say. They can do what they do. But I'm going to worship you. Come on, I believe that God is looking for a people like that. And I believe that each and every one of us have a choice of what we're gonna align with, just like we saw earlier. Are we gonna align with the light or are we gonna align with the darkness? The good or the evil? Matthew 6, Jesus said, listen, if the eye is good, if it's single, the whole body be full of light. But if the eye is evil or the eye is bad, the whole body be full of darkness. And he says, listen, when your light becomes darkness, ooh, how dark that is. Right now, before we move on, just as the Holy Spirit begins to prune things in your heart, I believe there's an, just a, an invitation right now to uproot the weeds, to uproot the tares, to uproot the things in you that have believed with, believed with and for anything less than God's best. The fruit that you've eaten from trees that he was not leading you to the conversations that you've allowed to sow opinion born out of offense in your heart. 
areas where maybe you felt like you were letting somebody talk and before you knew it, it brought you out of gratitude into grievance. All of a sudden, when you looked at somebody, instead of seeing their value, you saw them as a liability. Right now, begin to break agreement with those lies. Begin, I'm telling you, if you can change how you see what you see, you can begin to change how you be. In Jesus' name. Worthy, 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 worthy. Church, you're about to see God inhabit the place of your pruning, the place that you've allowed him to, to cut out, to root out, to pull down, he's about to plant. And the place that you've allowed him to dig and to excavate the old, to begin to, to take out those things in you that you've held onto that are holding you back. I'm telling you, he's about to plant where he pulled out. He's about, listen, where you've allowed him to dig, he's about to develop right now in Jesus' name. Listen, I got a lot of words for the new year, but I can sum, up, sum them up in two statements and three words. Holy Spirit and harvest. 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 It's not one or the other. It's both and. And I'm telling you, listen, for years, I believe the church has said, do we have, can, can we have the Holy Spirit and have the harvest? and they've chose one or the other, but I believe there's a representation given to us in scripture and it's called the life of Jesus to where you can be fully anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, going about doing good, healing all who are oppressed and seeing all of the lost be saved, seeing all of the hungry be fed, seeing all of the oppressed be delivered, amen. And I'm telling you, listen, we're not called to settle for anything less than Jesus. We're not called to settle for anything less than God's best. And if we can begin to dream, if we can begin to, to, to lighten the load of the things that we're not called to carry in this season, begin to increase the capacity to dream, I'm telling you, God is going to begin to give new hope to new hearts, not just our hearts. We're going to be the ones who get the hope, but God is going to give new hearts to the lost. It says in Ezekiel 36, 26, it'll take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a new heart of flesh. That word flesh means renewed sensitivity to the Father's touch. This past Thursday morning, I was, I was working out. It was 4.14 in the morning. And as I was working out, swimming my laps, hallelujah, come on, deep calls to deep. And as I was swimming in the backyard, all of a sudden the Lord says, let the re-dreamed of the Lord say so. I said, Lord, I thought it was redeemed. He said, it was, I changed it, Hallelujah. He said, because honestly, he said, when you're redeemed, when you're bought back, you get to dream again. You see, I think some of us have still been dreaming like we're lost. We're dreaming like we're, we're, we're sinners in need of a savior. We're the hungry in need of a handout. But I'm telling you, listen, when you are bought back, the word redeemed means to be bought back and returned to your original owner. When you are bought back and given back to creator God, I want to tell you, he wants to begin to give you dreams, give dreams to your heart that you can begin to partner with in prophetic and practical ways to see the, the, really the cries of this earth answered as you begin to manifest sonship. Amen. I mean, we talked about this last week because I was talking about uh, uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the importance of having a dream. How many of you this, this week, your heart has been stirred to dream again? David said this in Psalm 126. He said, listen, he goes, I remember, verse one, he said, I remember when you brought back the captivity of Babylon. We were like those who dreamed. He was looking back. It's kind of like, you know, I remember when I played high school football, hallelujah. You know, I remember my dad used to mow the grass in his football jersey on Saturdays. He couldn't fit in it. It looked like a busted can of biscuits. But he would smell fresh cut grass and he would think about the pigskin. And so we, he would do that and then watch Virginia Tech play football, hallelujah. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of Christians that are trying to put on something that doesn't fit anymore. Because they're looking back to when they used to dream and they've lost the hope. But David said, I remember when, when our mouth was filled with laughter, our tongue was singing. And then he said, God, would you do it again? Would you do it again? And I'm telling you, church, you, listen, each and every one of us are stepping into a do it again season. He says, those who sow in tears will reap in joy. I want to tell you where you weep, you're about to reap. Where you weep, 
If you find the things that you cry over, you find the things you dream about, that you find the things that keep you up at night, I'm not talking about in worry, I'm talking about in a longing to see change in the world around you. I'm telling you, all of a sudden, you begin to discover your purpose really, really quick. And vision will always connect your passion and your purpose in physical form. How many of you know that we're we're stepping into a new year on the Hebraic calendar tonight at sundown, okay? You know, and I know a lot of us are really not accustomed to, to, to recognizing that, uh, that calendar. You know, sometimes we might hear of this feast or that feast or hallelujah. But I want to tell you, there are times and seasons of the Lord, and they're not to be limited to the traditions of the past. They actually are a prophetic picture to speak to who we're called to become in the moment, and see, there's a thing that's happening tonight at sundown, and it's called Rosh Hashanah, okay? And Rosh Hashanah, of course, is the beginning of the new year. And listen, I want, some of y'all need two chances at a new year. <laughs> Amen? I don't know about you, but have you ever messed up your first chance? Thank God for the church of second chances. Amen? And third chances, and fourth chances, and five chances. In fact, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16 says, a righteous man falls seven times but gets back up. And I want to tell you, God never, he never shakes his head at the fall, but he always lifts his hands at the stand. Because he recognizes every time that we come short, it's just because we didn't see who we were in that moment. We chose to believe something less than his best about our life. Amen? And so if you're here today and maybe you stumbled in here, maybe you stumbled this week, I want to tell you, get back up. You got a, listen, you got a family who's cheering for you right now. You got the cloud of witnesses who are cheering for you right now. You've got your father in heaven saying, I know you can do it. You know, you may have felt like you came short. You may have felt like you fell, but I'm telling you, listen, my grace is more than enough to get you to where you need to be. Amen. Say this with me. Say, God is about to inhabit the place of my pruning. How many of y'all been cut on? In this past season, see pruning, see, listen, there can be a casting aside of the branches in our life, those things that are connected to us that are not bearing fruit. But then there's also a time where those things that have produced really, really good fruit get cut on, right? As a church, the Lord told us uh, this summer that if we would choose a self-imposed pruning, that we would not be pr- have, experience a sudden pruning in the fall, but we would experience the fruit of the new year in the fall season in a greater fullness. How many of you like fruit? Amen. Amen. That fruit simply means growth. And growth is not just, it's not quantity, it's quality. You see, we're all called to grow up into the fullness of Christ Jesus. Ephesians 4 says that's the purpose of the fivefold, amen? That's a lot of what we're gonna be talking about on these Wednesday nights with leadership is how we can begin to all become the full representation and manifestation of who God has called us to be in the earth. Because if you are a follower of Christ, you are called to lead in some way. In fact, you know, Jesus was the only leadership model where he said, if you follow me, I'll make you. A lot of leadership formulas and structures are about self-made men and self-made women, but only Jesus says, if you'll just follow me, I'll make you. And I'll tell you, the key to being a great leader is first being an amazing follower, being an obedient follower, saying, God, wherever you want to go, Jesus, whatever you want to do, I'm in, I'm in. I don't know how it's going to work, but I just trust you because I know that you, a lot of times God will have me get into something that does not look like it's going to work. He'll have me believe in somebody that doesn't look like they're going to work out. But then guess what? God plus anything equals everything. God plus anything equals everything. He can turn every situation around. He can raise every dead thing to begin to live again. And there's a couple things holding on to life that he will kill. You see, both God and the devil are out to kill you. One wants you to have new life. The other wants you to have his life. You see, when God gives you new life, all of a sudden you enter into abundant life. See, the devil's wanting to kill you so you can be as miserable as him. And see, when you begin to agree through groaning, complaining, murmuring, which is the language of the wilderness, all of a sudden you find yourself in a corner trying to get some other people to join you because you're lonely. But praise, honor, thanksgiving, that's the language of promise. I was asking the Lord for a word for this new year, and he gave a bunch of them. But I also said, God, give me a scripture. And 
all of a sudden, the scripture, Psalm 57, 7 through 9, came to my heart. 57, 79. 50, Psalm 57, 79, I believe this is an invitation, and then I also believe it's a declaration, and they're going to put it on the screen as well. But verse 7 says, my heart is steadfast. That word steadfast means it's fixed, it's immovable, it's planted. No matter what happens around me, I ain't going anywhere. How many of you know, listen, the church needs a heart that's steadfast. When what's on the news changes what you believe about the good news, when all of a sudden, oh man, felt like a mosquito at a nudist colony there for a second. All kinds of, all kinds of real estate to occupy, but I'm going to bring it back in. You see, you find out in times like this, if you're living according to the world standards or according to the word standards, do we react to our situation or do we rise to the challenge? And see, as the body of Christ, we are, called to, we are called to arise and shine, not when it's easy, not when it's good, but when it's dark and when it's hard. Because honestly, if we, listen, anybody can arise and shine when it's good. Everybody thinks they have peace until it begins to rain. Amen. Amen? And the truth is, you don't really know what you got until all of a sudden the storm comes to test what's been built. We talked about last week that God's reward for all growth in our life is pruning. And how all promotion, we go from pruning to promotion, but all promotion is met with pressing. We see this in the life of Jesus in Luke 4. We see it throughout history. And I'm telling you, every time you've been promoted, you've recognized that you've come up into a different place where the pressing was greater than you knew in the past season. And it wasn't to push you down. It was so that what was on the inside could come out. Amen? Because when we begin to walk through the place of pressing from a posture of promotion, we begin to see provision unlocked. And provision unlocked is not about what comes to you. It's about what's in you being unearthed. The word provision simply means for the vision. And when you get pressed, you begin to find out if, it, if what is at work in you and what you have believed and therefore become is, is actually moving you toward the plan of God or away from the plan of God for your life. And here we see in Psalm 57, he says, my heart is steadfast, oh God, it's immovable, it's fixed. And I like he said it again. I think the first time he said it for God, the second time he said it for him. How many of y'all ever made a faith statement and then you had to say it again because you didn't believe it the first time? I love that. My heart is steadfast, oh God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. You see, it makes no sense. Isaiah 54 says, sing, oh, you barren one. But how many of you know, natural understanding says you sing when you give birth. No, 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 no. But spiritual understanding says you sing when you're barren and you will give birth. And when you can find your song, when you can find his sound in a barren time, then guess what? The, the, the children of the barren becomes more than, the, than, than those who are able to reproduce in their own strength. And that's why there's been an attack on your worship. That's why some of you have felt so distracted during your times of worship, whether it be here or in your, in your home or in your car, that all of a sudden, once you set your heart to, to really look unto Jesus, to really give him the attention and the glory to his name, that all of a sudden, people who never call you begin to call you. All of a sudden, dogs that aren't even yours begin to show up at your front door. And I'm not even talking about people. I mean, I'm not talking about dogs. I'm talking about people. Hallelujah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm talking about dogs. How many of you recognize when you all of a sudden, when you say, okay, I'm going to focus on the Lord, all kinds of other things show up in your life. Leaders can recognize and resist the temptation to be distracted. They never allow the urgent to take away from the important. Amen? Because there is always a squeaky wheel trying to steal your oil. Matthew 25 called them the unwise virgins. Remember the unwise virgins? There was 10 virgins, five wise, five, five unwise. The wise went and got oil. The others depended on the preparation of others for their promise. The bridegroom came and they said, sorry, Jack. Only got enough for me. So that's a terrible thing to say as a believer. Well... They said it. Jesus quoted them. So what you can do about that? I think there's things that we try to put in Jesus' mouth that he never said. I think there's things that we try to say, well, he meant this, and he didn't mean that. I like the fact that in Matthew 18, when he talks about confronting sinning brothers, that he says, number one, first you go to them, right? When you find somebody in sin, go to them. And if they hear you, you win a brother. If they don't hear you, take somebody else. Still try to appeal to them. Still trying to, try to, try to find an openness in their hearts where they could hear truth and, and prayerfully begin to change. But if they don't change, 
bring it before the church, begin to relate to them as a heathen and begin to move on, recognizing that if they're not gonna change, your attempt to change them will become a distraction in the coming days. The very next verse, now listen, when Jesus spoke, he did not announce the verse of what he was about to say. It was a conversation. The very next words out of his mouth says, say this, that if you bind anything on earth, in other words, if you confront it in his name, it'll be confronted in the heavens. But if you loose anything in the earth, it'll be loosed in heaven. So how many things are we allowing to be loosed in the earth and therefore are being loosed in high places because we're not willing to confront sin in our midst? I'm not talking about going around pointing the finger and speaking witness. Isaiah 58 says, don't do that. I'm talking about appealing to a brother or sister. And this is how you begin to, attra- this is how you begin to confront somebody who has found themselves living a life less than the life God called them to do. You step into their life and you remind them who they are. You don't point to the behavior, you point to the belief. Because people become what they believe. And behavior always reveals belief. And so you begin to step up and just say, hey, this isn't you. What have you believed about you that is causing you to act this way? And then it's up to their heart if they can hear it then or hear it later. Are you with me? But what happens so often is we find ourselves judging, whether it be a brother or sister in Christ, judging a political party, Uh uh-oh, maybe judging a different people group, a different denomination, our coworker, our child, our spouse. How many of you know the things you judge in others, you're guilty of? Because every time you judge someone else, what you've done is you've actually put yourself up in a place of pride and you've invited that attack and said, I'm stronger than the attack. And guess what? The attack says, oh, fresh meat. (laughs) The best thing you can do is to begin to pray and not enter into pride. Ask for the mercy of God to touch their heart so that they would not walk in the fruit of what they've sown. There are people right now that I am just, I am pleading for the mercy of God to come upon their life, that they would not reap the seeds that they're sowing. And I am praying that the blood of Jesus, I know, it's, I, know, I know the blood of Jesus is greater, but I also know that choices have consequences. And you need to know, listen, church is not a game you play, it's a life you live. Amen? Church is not somewhere you go, it's who you are. We are the church. It is an expression of the kingdom of God here on earth. And our life should look like his life. That's why he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If he's not doing it in heaven, you shouldn't be doing it here. When he has an issue with somebody, he's not calling the father and saying, can you believe what they just did? You know, they just took my name in vain. Can you believe that? I know, we gave them grace and look what they're doing with it. Hebrews says he ever lives to make intercession. He ever lives to make intercession for the saints. He ever lives to step into the gap, to step into the empty place in your life, in my life, in our life, and to say, this isn't who they are. Look at them through me, and I'm gonna ask them to look at you through me. Because when we see the Father through the life of Jesus, and the Father sees us through his life as well, guess what? All of a sudden, it's a marriage made in heaven. That's what communion looks like. Not my word for today. I'm still trying to read Psalm 57. Y'all there? I wanted to give you plenty of time to get there. My heart, say this with me. Say, my heart is steadfast. It's fixed. It's immovable. It's unshakable. It's planted. Feels good to say that, doesn't it? You know, trees planted by the river, whatever they do will prosper. If you're not prospering, you may not be planted. I'll let that walk around for a little while. But then the fruit of the planting of their heart is seen in how they begin to offer up their song. I will sing and give praise. And then I love verse eight. Awake my glory. Awake my glory. Awake my strength. Awaken my glory. Awaken Christ in me, the hope of glory. How many of you know Jesus' prayers get answered? And in John 17, Jesus prayed this. He said, Father, the same glory that you've given to me, I've given to them. And I ask you to make them one as you and I are one. His definition of one is a lot different than our definition of one. His definition of one is communion, to be the same, to be one flesh, to to walk in such an agreement and alignment that you can't tell the difference between the two. Our definition of one is a picnic. A unity service. 
where a couple people can get together and act like they like each other and they're still talking crap about each other behind their backs. <laughs> Jesus deserves better. And so does his body. In case, in, case, in case you may not have noticed, I'm pretty passionate about this. I, I, you know, I actually, I believe this thing. I really do. And I believe that if we believe this word, we'll become this word. And I believe that God is in the business of giving dreams to people who are willing to run with the dream that God has given. But then it goes on from this invitation to a declaration. He says, awake, lute, and harp. And then he says this, David says this, I, say it with me, will awaken the dawn. I will awaken the dawn. That tells me that the new day is not something coming. The new day is here and we are the new day. You, listen, when he says, do not call to mind the former things nor consider things of old, behold, I do a new thing. What if you're the new thing he's doing? I think a lot of times we see our life with God as just sinners saved by grace waiting for a handout because we're hungry. It said that he put Gideon under the old covenant on like a glove. So what's in you keeping him from extending himself? Luke chapter two, it said there was no room at the end for Jesus to be born, so he was born in a manger. Why? Luke chapter two, verse six says, when the day of her delivery had been completed, your delivery is connected to your deliverance. And I'm telling you, in this season right now and in this time, as we're getting to step into a new year, we're coming into what's known as the 10 days of all. How many of you are familiar with this? The 10 days of all, it's just a, it's a, it's just a window of time. It's a, it's a call to prayer. It's a call, it's a call to repentance. How many of you know, listen, I, I love 10 days of all, but I live in 365 days of all because I believe he is awesome. I believe he is beyond description. But in this season of time, it encourages, you know, the, the Jewish belief, like when you begin to study like the Talmud and all that kind of stuff and all that Hebrew. In these 10 days, the belief is that the books about your life are opened up and that you have the opportunity to come and read what has been written and to agree or disagree and begin to appeal to God through repentance and ask the Lord to say, God, listen, there are some seeds that I've sown in times past. I'd like to not put miracle grow on those. Instead, could we just spray some crop killer, maybe a little round up? Because I, I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want this that I did last year to show up in my life next year. And you know what that's called? That's called breaking cycles. That's called that you don't have to, you don't have to repeat next year the pain of the past of this year. How many of you say, listen, if I could do that over, I would. I got great news for you. His mercy is new every morning. Do it again, God. It's a redo. It's a reset. It's a recalibrate. It's a renew. So in these 10 days, not only is it a call to prayer, it's called a repentance, it's called a generosity that I believe, and again, they, they look at it as these 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and what's known as Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, okay? How many of you know, listen, atonement is, they recognize the Day of Atonement because they had not yet recognized that their Messiah had come, but we recognize that every day is atonement because the blood of Jesus speaks a better word, Amen. But what happens, you begin to recognize we've got what's called a feast of trumpets tonight. Hallelujah. Thank God that Jim and Donna Henderson brought me a silver trumpet. Hallelujah. How many of you like that? I tried to blow it. I did. I thought Greta was laughing at me trying to blow the trumpet there for a minute. First blow sounded good. Second blow sounded like Daffy Duck with a kazoo. So we're just going to use this as a visual. We'll see. Maybe we'll get there later on. <laughs> Pastor Jeff was first chair trumpet. You know, he'd probably, he, he could blow it way better than I could. Hallelujah. But if y'all remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about Numbers, Numbers chapter 10 and this call of Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, how God was raising the standard of praise. He was raising the standard of prophetic understanding. He was raising the standard of habitation. And say it with me. God is about to inhabit the place of my pruning. And it talked about how there were two trumpets given. And when two trumpets sounded, it was an end gathering. And see, we're coming from the Feast of Trumpets into the Feast of Tabernacles, which is also called the Feast of End Gathering. 
It's the feast of ingathering. Honestly, how many of you know Jesus? I don't want to mess up anybody's Christmas, but Jesus wasn't born December 25th. Don't worry, I'm not even going to touch your Easter bunny today. <laughs> I love Christmas. I love Christmas. People have a problem with Christmas, you're, in a, you're, mm. you're sad. And you try to make other people sad. And then you get weird because people take Christ out of Christmas. Listen, if, you're, if, if the Christ in your Christmas is limited to somebody saying happy holidays, you might need to get born again. Hallelujah. I was talking to somebody. They were, ah, blow that trumpet, baby. <laughs> I was asking for some advice on how to handle a recent uh, this issue in the public and stuff like that. And, 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 um, and I just told him, I said, guys, I think you guys are settling for a vain repetition instead of seeing a prayer be answered. And I think sometimes we would settle for a form of godliness because it makes us look better, than, better to those around us. It begins to speak to who we're not. Instead of saying, you know what, instead of just going through, a, a, just reciting something I don't really believe, I'd rather become the answer to the prayer I pray. I believe this thing. And so when they blew two trumpets, it was the end gathering. But it says that when they blew one, it was a call to the leaders. And that's what we're doing right now. We're calling to the leaders because I believe leaders are laborers. And I believe that Jesus said the fields are ready. It's the laborers who are not. And the whole thing that we're doing on these Wednesday nights is we're going to begin to teach to learn, learning to lead is to get leaders into the position of labor so that the birthing of vision can come to pass. I got five minutes. This was the message. Everything else was like appetizers. But if you go eat with me, you know I like appetizers. So... 5779, okay, is the Hebrew year that we're coming into, okay? Now, interesting, guess what 5779 is a picture of? Birthing vision. (laughs) Ain't God awesome? He's amazing. I'm still blown away by this whole dark and light thing earlier, which we're going to get to. Let me just give you some understanding because I think it's going to help you. I think it's going to encourage you. I think all of a sudden you're going to recognize that this, where we've been as we've been talking about a summer of vision has not just been a nice series, but it's actually had everything to do with who you're called to be and the destiny that God has for you to walk in. 57 simply means in the year of. So 79 is our focus because how many of you know these guys have been there for a while? 5,700 years or so. 5779, of course, 5780 will be next year. But here's what's interesting. The number seven is the Hebrew letter I am. It means to see. This is the, 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 the word picture. Uh-oh. My guest artist did not. I'm a detail guy. <laughs> This is the picture. I mean, excuse me, this is the letter. This is the picture. What's interesting, there's eight what they call crowned letters in the Hebrew alphabet, where they actually have a crown on them, Kingsway. And Ion and Tet are two of the eight. And so they actually put these little, I, I can't pronounce them. I took some Claritin D, so I'm a little, got to have more phlegm for that, you know what I'm saying? Bye-bye. <laughs> so both here and here, when you begin to look at the literal language, they, these are crowns. And it's a picture, because how many of you know, listen, we're not the king, but we're called to bow to worship before the king. And these actually represent a choice of how you position yourself. So seven, we've been in the, we've been in the 70s here for nine years. It's iron, it's vision, it means to see. But here's what's interesting, because this is what's unique about this year. See, last year was about to see the open door. This is the year to actually begin to see God inhabit the place that has been prepared through pruning. The letter nine, excuse me, the number nine, because how many of you know in the Hebrew alphabet, letters and letters and numbers are used interchangeably. And so it's beautiful language. And so the number nine is actually pictured in the letter tet, tet, tate. Okay. Now, Tate is a paradoxical letter. 
It can mean good or evil, and the choice is in the eye of the beholder. It says that in this year, how you see what you see is up to you. And how many of you know nine also is the number of the Holy Spirit? Nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, which speak of a demonstration of God's power. Nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, which speak of a manifestation of God's character. And church, we need both. We need the character without compromise, but bless God, we need power. We need power. In fact, love without power ain't God. When God's heart was questioned, how did Jesus respond? He always healed the sick and cast out devils. We don't just love in word, but we love in deed. Deed has to do with demonstration. So Holy Spirit. So this is the year I believe to see not just the full manifestation of the Holy Spirit, but I believe that for those who will choose to see rightly, and Isaiah 520 gives us a warning. It talks about the nation who calls good evil and evil good. And I wanna tell you right now, our nation is in the balance. And I want to tell you, church, you're not called to agree with one side of the aisle or the other. You're not called to agree with the donkey, shigiri baba, or the elephant. Had a little brain fart there. I was about to throw a possum out. <laughs> I was like, because you know, because I was like, wait a minute, am I just trying to say Alabama? Roll tide? Come on, can we give it up for Tua? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, roll tide. I heard Auburn play too, but the um All right. No, everybody played great. I'm for, I'm for the whole state, amen? I remember when I first came to Alabama and Auburn beat Alabama, Auburn beat Alabama and, and I made the dumb decision of trying to, unite, trying, to, trying to use this prophetic picture of being able to rejoice with others. And I said, come on, guys, at the end, let's just give a one, one two, three, war eagle. And I had a line of people that were not wanting prayer. I said, if you ever make us do that again, we're gone. Now, they left for other reasons, but, you know. <laughs> some, hey, some, the sooner you go, the better we all are. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. They love it. They're watching online. All right, so, <laughs> good or evil. And honestly, I had, a, I had a call like this yesterday. Somebody was, it was, it was weird. It was, they, were, they were trying to talk about, you know, gosh, listen, you guys have an amazing church and, and, and the way that God is using you is amazing. But, God, 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 God. And I was like, wow, buddy, this is a real demonstration of this new year. I bless your spirit. I bless you. I bless you. Have you been drinking? I bless you. I'm not telling names, honey. It's okay. Oh, I'm out of time. All right. So this is the year to see good or to see evil, but the deciding factor is in your heart. And what is, how many of you know, listen, your heart is a bank account. Your eyes and your ears are deposit slips. And what goes in will come out. It's up to you what you allow to come in, but what you come in will determine what comes out. See, people think that they have a choice in how they respond. No, 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 you have a choice in how you receive. You can't, li oh man. You can't listen to crap and bloom carnations. <laughs> Iron, tet. Now, interesting, tet, the picture for it is a womb, a wineskin, or a coiled snake. This is a great study, y'all. Now, for those who, who choose to birth a good vision by agreeing with the tree of life, for them, this year is going to be a year of birthing. It's going to be a year in them where preparation has been made for what God wants to pour out. For those who agree with the enemy, this is going to be a year that they position themselves as a coiled snake, but they will be the one whose head is cut off. Yes, that should, that, listen, that, 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 should, that should bring the fear of the Lord into your heart. At the very least, the fear of Jason. <laughs> now, here's the picture. I'm kidding. But here's the picture. When you look at this year together, it's the iron tet, iron tate. It's a womb pregnant with vision. That's what this year is. How many of you all of a sudden, you are so thankful for where we've been and what God has brought us to? 
Say, I will awaken the dawn. I will give birth. I am pregnant with promise. Amen. Pastor Jeff. So we were saying that right then. How many of you felt the presence of the Lord begin to touch your head? I started feeling an anointing coming on the mind right now. And I'm telling you, listen, I, I, I've seen and I've felt firsthand some of the warfare this past week that has kept many from stepping into a new season in a right way. And I want to tell you, what just came on you right then was an anointing to begin to think in a new way so you could enter into a new day. Because the season that we're walking into looks nothing like the seasons we've come out of. I thank God for where we've been. <sighs> but listen, the best of our last days cannot compare with the least of our next. And God is about to do something for you that is beyond description. We're going to prepare to receive our offering. But before I do, I want to talk about, I want to give an invitation. Because honestly, you can't expect to see if your eyes haven't been opened by the light himself. And you can't expect to be a womb until you are born again. And there's people here today that maybe you prayed a prayer in a church that was connected where somebody maybe stepped up and said, if you died today, where would you go? You'd go in the ground, that's where you'd go. To me, it never made sense for somebody to try to use the intimidation of fear to introduce love because there is no fear in love. And I can tell you this, when you were at your worst, God saw you at your best. And because of that, he gave his best because you were worth it. And the beauty of the gospel as it helps you to, it causes you to see your worth through the eyes of the one who's worthy. Because value is not determined by what you do. Value is determined by what someone's willing to pay for you. And he paid it all. Because when he looked at you, when he saw you, when he had a dream before you ever were a thought, he said, Doyle's worth it. Doyle's worth it. Tim is worth it. Wayne is worth it. Jeff is worth it. Dick is worth it. Mike is worth it. Janie is worth it. Man, I'm so happy to see you this morning, Janie. I love you. The devil's a liar. Healed and whole. Right now, I speak, to, I speak to your blood. I speak to your organs. I bless you with healing oil right now in Jesus' name. Todd Harden, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you. I know you were sick last week, but I want to tell you, this house is not the same without you being in the house. There was a big old Todd's eyes hole. We love you. We bless you. We thank God for you. And I say that about each and every one of you. Never allow someone or something to put your worth in question in your own heart. The greatest lie of the enemy, it was from the beginning and it's to the end, is he tries to get us to question has God said, will God do, by creating a question in our heart about the heart of God for us. And I want to tell you, when Jesus hung naked on a cross, every question was answered. If you ever want to know how much he loves you, just, just remind yourself that he said this much. He gave it all. And if you're here this morning and you've never really had eyes to see, you've always seen yourself through your situation or your circumstance, you've never been born again, maybe you've gone to church you thought God was somebody who wanted you to do stuff that you weren't able to do in your own strength. I want to tell you, he's a good God and he's given you the Holy Spirit so you can be just like him. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if I'm talking to your heart. And what I'm asking you right now is you're saying, listen, I don't want to live one more day the way I've lived the last days. I don't want to live my way. I want to live his way. And I'm willing to give, I'm willing to give up all that I have so that I can have all that he has to give. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One. Two, three, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. As soon as Jody welcomed you guys, my heart leapt over to this side of the room. Anyone else? Guys, look, this is one of the reasons why it is so, and I, listen, I'm, I'm, I don't want to draw attention in a bad way, I want to draw attention in a good way. This is one of the important reasons why, listen, we don't invite people to church just so they'll come sing our songs. We invite people to join us at church so that they can experience freedom the way that we've experienced freedom. So that they can encounter Jesus the way that we've encountered Jesus. So that they can experience the Holy Spirit in the way that we've experienced the Holy Spirit. Can you guys come on up here? I want to pray with you. Come on up. Joseph, Laura, come on up here with them. Come on, let's thank the Lord. 
Come on down, guys. What's your name? Stacy? I'm Jason. What's your name? James. James. Come on, let's join with Stacy and James. Not only in giving our heart, but also in welcoming our brother and sister home. Amen? Let's pray this together. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I receive your heart and and your life. I thank you that I'm not what I did, but I'm what Jesus has done for me. And I ask you to fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. More. More right now. Jesus. There it is. Just let him wash over you. Let the Holy Spirit just begin to wash over you. There it is. There it is. There it is. Right now, every spirit contrary to the Holy Spirit leaves your life in Jesus' name. Right now, every label is removed and replaced by one label, mine. See, it said that it said that God would write his name on our foreheads. And every label that has been placed on you, I take off of you now. And I take that yoke, that thousand pound burden that you've been walking around with that you couldn't carry. It comes off of you now. More freedom, more love, more joy, and more truth. Right now, I break the power that abuse has had on your life. Right now, I break the power that hate has had against you. And I tell you how proud I am that you just kept getting up. Man, people try to knock you down and you just kept getting back up. Come on, come on. It's like Rocky. They thought you were down, but it was like, (laughs) yo, Adrian, you know? They just could listen, you've been against the ropes. You know what it's like to be on the ropes. You know what it's like to take a knee, but you never quit. And if you don't quit, eventually you win. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Come on, bring it in. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Welcome home. Welcome home. It always is. James says it's been a long road. Sometimes the longest road is home. Amen? But we're a house who always keeps the light on so you can always find the way. Amen? Come on, let's thank the Lord for James and Stacy. Go ahead and stand up with your offering if you could. You know, this is the first fruit season. Amen? And, And it was interesting, I was brushing my teeth this morning and the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, This is the first fruits of all first fruits. And I'm telling you, I believe that right now, even as we're coming into this 10 days of all, it's a time for prayer, it's a time for repentance, it's a time for, for, for charitable giving, to be a blessing. I believe that we cannot just set a course for our life these 10 days. I believe we can determine a new direction for our life. And the redreamed, the redreamed, say, I have a dream can begin to say so, that we can begin to partner with the vision that God has given for our life. How many of you have fresh hope for this new year? How many of us have new vision that we wanna see come to pass? When we give today, I encourage you, don't just give out of tradition. Don't just give because it's what you do. Give from a heart of thanksgiving, believing that everything God has placed in your heart, God will bring to pass because He will. Amen? I love you. Let's minister to the Lord in our giving. I see the cloud and I stand again. I want to see your glory like Moses. Flashes of light, the rolls of thunder, and I'm not afraid. Show me your love. 
as Josh Kosker comes down and begins to prepare our ministry teams, if you're here this morning and you need healing in your body, you need somebody to pray with you, agree for you, we're going to have some amazing ministry teams up here. Josh is going to come up and introduce them, as well as releasing us for our King's Kids. But I figure you guys have been so patient, I might as well try to give this thing a blow. Amen? Now, don't laugh at me now. Come on. But I do right now by faith. Numbers chapter 10, it said when they blew the one trumpet, it was a call to leaders and it was called sounding the advance. Sounding the advance, amen? And so right now as we blow this, I'm calling forth the leaders in this house and in this city as laborers for the harvest, amen? Randy, blow with me, ready? Oh geez, that was terrible. team if you guys could come on down we're here if you need us physical healing just need an encouraging word come on down we'd love to pray with you if you have kids and king's kids if you could please go release the workers first and then come on down if you'd like to receive prayer next service will begin shortly have a great weekend